Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. This is Big Game Dame, the one and only, and this is my man, Dude. <laughs> now, let's explain. This is episode one, so let's get into it. Two Philadelphia sports fans, born and raised Southwest Philly. We are just going to talk about sports from a Philly fan perspective. And you know Philly fans have the most unique perspective in the world of sports. All right, so let's get into it. Today is going to be very Philadelphia-centric. We'll branch off in a little bit different things as we go on, but let's start with Philadelphia and what's the big story in Philadelphia, ladies and gentlemen. What's everybody talking about? We all know it. <laughs> NBA Finals are right now, and somebody is missing again. Somebody is missing. One person in particular, but a certain team is missing. Philadelphia 76ers. Everyone in Philadelphia is talking about Ben Simmons. Let's get into it. Ben Simmons, what do we do with this guy? Let's try to actually analyze this, all right? Okay. So let's start off with this. Before we even get specifically into Ben, and it bleeds together, state of the Sixers right now. You can't have a state of the sixes without starting with Ben. Um, so let's just go there then. All right. What, what? How do you, and let's not talk from an emotional fan perspective. Let's look at it from Morley's perspective. Okay. How, what do you do? What are some things that, what? what's he thinking right now? I think the number one thing is, can they salvage him? Because of course they're privy to information. We're not. So they should be able to know where he's at mentally and how much he's going to work to improve himself. Now, having said that, um, I respect Dal Morey probably more than any GM the Sixers have had since I've been watching. Um, I can't see him giving Ben Simmons away. I can't see him giving him away for 50 cents, 75 cents on a dollar. I would rather him come back than trade him for the sake of Philly, Philly fans are not going to but accept him. Can he really come back? And here's the thing. like I understand that Sixers culture isn't like Eagles culture, mm -hmm. but it's still Philadelphia. Can Ben, ben Simmons come back? Uh, this is where the GM can't give in to the noise. He has yeah. to do his job. Um, he has to do what's best for the organization. And if that means bringing Ben back, that's what he has to do. He can't. I hope that he doesn't make a trade because the fans are – Discussed it with Ben right now. So the Sixers at this point, do you feel like because of what's happened in the playoffs the last couple of years, the Sixers are selling low? They would be selling low right now. I mean, if you're a rival team, you have to see blood and water when making an offer. I don't think that you would make the same offer today that you would have made last off season, last off season. So in that perspective, then yes. So let me get into this then. What exactly is Ben Simmons' value? What's his value right now? Listen, once again, if I'm Dal Murray, and I know I'm not Dal Murray, <laughs> um, I'm treating him like his value is what it was going to last season. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, some of the NBA insiders rumored that the Sacramento Kings are interested. And for me personally, that package looks like De'Aaron Fox, Halliburton, and we're going to swap number one picks. If not, then we're going on to the next team. Like That's, the, that's how I'm treating Ben Simmons. I don't want... Uh, Buddy Hill, Harrison Barnes, and a pick. Yeah, like back in the day, like the old Barkley deal. Yeah, like I, I want big time players because here's here's my reasoning. Even right now, Ben Simmons ceiling, he can be an MVP in this league. And if I'm talking to a team like Sacramento, Darren Fox, as good as he is, his ceiling is probably uh, meddling All Star. You know, like. Maybe All Star, Halliburton, maybe All Star. Ben Simmons could be MVP of this league. So the interesting thing about Philadelphia is because you know everyone's frustrated, everyone's hurt about what happened, you know, losing to the Hawks. Yes. And Ben Simmons doing uh, what a lot of people believe is another disappearing act. So if you keep him, mm -hmm. like. How do you fix him? How does that repair system look? Like, what what can the Sixers do? Or is this just something where Ben Simmons has to, like, honestly, just go to the Wizard and figure this out? Like, you know, like, well, the, I, the talent is there. You're telling me the talent's there. So yeah. what in the world? What what has to happen? Well, I think this is just like a work setting. 
you have to have management come. You have to sit down and come to an understanding. Look, Ben, this is what we expect from you coming into the season. And if you can't do these things, then we're going to have to move off you. You're going to have to shoot X amount of times a game. You're going to have to take X amount of threes. You can't turn down shots. It has to be a program put in place this all season where all parties know what's expected. So if that isn't followed, then you know you have to. Then at that point, if you haven't traded them, you have to move on. Let me ask you this. You think the Sixers over the last few years, and this goes bleeds into Embiid as well. Do you think when it comes to the two key star players, they've kind of ran a bit of a loose ship? They've kind of let them kind of free. You know, it seems like Philadelphia has low self-esteem in this sense. They're so afraid when they get a star to lose that star that, you know, some of the things that normally would be in place with other teams, like let's say structure and accountability, mm-hmm. kind of haven't been there for these guys as they've come into the league. I absolutely agree with that. I, I think that's more on the Sixers front office where these guys, they didn't have veterans in there to show and be how to be a, a veteran. You know, when you hear players get interviewed, I recently heard – um I recently heard an interview with Michael Red, and he was talking about his veterans. I had Sam Cassell, I had Irvin Johnson, and all the players you name. And the Sixers never did that for these guys. Like, imagine, you know, a Danny Green type, a Dwight Howard type, when Embiid and Simmons were babies. And this is one of the things that people who weren't all aboard on the process were talking about, that these guys needed, all right, we're losing all these games, but we're not bringing in people who can actually groom these other guys. Yeah. These young guys who are going to be the future of the team. And now here we are where they're the present. They're no longer the future. They're the present. And that intangible is missing. That yeah. intangible is missing. Yeah. And, and, and you look around and you look at the teams that are left and the teams that go far, you know, it's always great leadership. Um, and it's not always provided by the coaches. It's it's those, the P.J. Tuckers, um, you know, even though Chris Paul is somewhat of a superstar, he's a veteran paid his dues. You look at a, um, I keep drawing a blank now, uh, a Crowder. Uh, players like that who can come in, they command respect, and you'll listen to them. And they'll, they'll, you know, they'll walk you through how to be successful in the league. And look at like a team like the Bucks, where they bring in Drew Holiday over the offseason. Mm-hmm. And they were 0-2. They were 0-2. And then here they are, back in both series. You know, against talented teams. Now, I will say this to, to bring this conversation full circle. Another reason that I don't give up on Ben or I don't trade for 75 cents on a dollar, last year at this time, people were killing Giannis, you know? Yeah. And I mean, players have bad playoffs. I mean, it's just like, like you, you have a, you, bad things happen. It's, it's how do you rebound? What do you do going forward? But the fear is this isn't the first time we've seen this in the playoffs from Simmons. Mm-hmm. That's the fear where this has become a pattern now. Listen. I, I get it. I understand the fans' gripe. I'm just as upset and disappointed as Ben and Ben as anyone else. But you, as you said earlier, you have to take emotion out of the decision, and you have to do what's best for the franchise. And giving him up because the fans are going to boo him or the fans are not going to be engaged if he's here, I just don't think that's the right decision. I think it has to be a trade where everybody's like, okay, that makes sense. You know, uh, Lillard. That makes sense. You're getting a, a superstar back, okay. A killer. Yeah. Like that's and that's what the Sixers need. They don't have that killer instinct. Yeah, I don't I don't want to wake up and see he's been traded to Cleveland. Uh, there's nothing in Cleveland that's gonna make yeah. me think we're gonna get closer to a championship. Exactly. And it's from for me personally, I think if you're not talking about bringing in somebody like Lillard, mm-hmm. you're not talking about somebody who's you, who's going to be you're wasting your time at that point. I you might as well keep him because you're selling low. Yeah. And you never want to sell low, especially with someone with his talent. So let's wrap this up. Moving forward with the Sixers, what do they do? How do you get over this hump? 30 seconds. What do we do? You got two options. If you can't get a a big fish, and I mean, that's like a Lillard, I think you got to you gotta stay the course. I, I know that's hard to hear. I know people don't want to hear that, but you got to... You, you, you got to sink a swim with Ben. I, I would sink a swim with him before, like I said, I wake up and hear we traded him to Cleveland or we got Buddy Hill and Marvin Bagley. Mm-hmm. I'd rather see what, what becomes of Ben here. Speaking of sink or swim, mm-hmm. let's get into it. 
the state of Philadelphia sports Eagles training camp is coming up next week. Everybody's talking about number one. Then he's going to be the number one thing talk people in Philly talk about, Jalen Hurts. Yes. Let's get into it. Let's talk about Eagles, and then we'll really close really quick with the Phillies, because I think we kind of know where that's going. Okay. okay? So let's talk about it. Training camp around the corner. State of the Philadelphia Eagles right now. Your opinion. What What are we going to see, and what do you think the Eagles need to do to be respectable this year? Uh, I think this season is all about observations. This season is just seeing what you have. I think I would I would recommend fans lower their expectations this season. Me personally, I'm looking at maybe a four or five win team, and if they overachieve, I'll be ecstatic. Um, but this thing, what I need to know this season is who do we have and who don't we have? Do we have a quarterback? Do we have receivers? Is the offensive line able to finally hold up? So we know going forward with the um, with the picks that they have allotted, where we need to go. But this season's all about finding out what you have. I think that's what Howie's doing, honestly. I mean, you have those three first round picks looming. Yeah. It hurts. I mean, everything. I think everything comes down to Jalen Hurts. If yes. you have a player, you can take those three first round picks you got and distribute them. If Hurts isn't what we're looking for, you go out and you get yourself a quarterback. That's Three first-round picks to get you a quarterback in this league. So, I don't know. How do you look at that? Is that what, that's what we're thinking about, like just an evaluation year? Yeah. I, temper our expectations. <clears throat> evaluate. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I want to see these high draft picks if they are if they got a chance to be star player. Like you said, I want to see the quarterback. I want to see the first-round pick receiver from this year, the first-round pick from last year. Um, I want to see how the defense does under a new coordinator. I'm, I'm, I'm just interested to see exactly what it, This is probably the first time – and maybe what twenty years where we just we just don't know we just don't, don't have know. a clue we don't know about what they are and with a new head coach with no track record we don't know what to expect so is this going to be like I said my expectations are very low open mind and I just want to see how the season plays out and honestly a lot of the guys that were here last year we don't know what they can do because last year just went so bad we're never going to fully know. Mm-hmm. what happened with Doug, what happened with Carson, that's going to stay in-house. But we just know something bad happened. Yeah. Obviously, um, you know, there were the rumors about it got to a point where they're not even talking. They're mm-hmm. not communicating, which is death for mm-hmm. a coach and a quarterback. But it's obvious the end result where the head coach of a Super Bowl winning team is out in a couple years. And then you look at what? The future quarterback is out as well mm-hmm. in that same year. That something really bad happened. Mm-hmm. So... These guys who are left here, mm-hmm. we don't know. I'm going to use Rager as an example. Rager's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Um, a lot of people are down on him, but we, things were so dysfunctional. Like, what, and here's like, the thing with you Rager. Know? You saw flashes. You saw we, some we good things. We know he things. has the talent. Yeah, so hopefully as you know, football talk, they put him in the right position. And you know, who knows? Like I said, they have, let's put it like this, they have prospects. Now we're going to see if these prospects are players or not. And, I, and like I said, that's what this season is about. By the end of the season, we should be able to know, as you said, do we have a quarterback? Do we have receivers? What do we have? And we want to know, like, you know what? Let's, let's throw, a, throw it in the trash. We got to start all over. Or are we going to be very excited? Like, hey, it, it Hurts is the key to everything. Kurt, hurts is the key. He's the key to everything. So if – I'll say this. If he's a player, then look out. Or we can, if he's not, we can send him to Texas with those three first round picks and get Watson. (laughs) (laughs) Just don't let him go on the main line. Yeah. So, really quick, and then we'll close up with the Eagles. Phillies. We got the we got the Phillies coming up. I got one more Eagles thing for you. You you got something in my mind right now. (laughs) Your personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Your personal opinion, is there hope for Eagles fans? If they're patient, yes. I, I think you, you you can't have any reasonable expectations this season. And I think if you do, that's when you're going to get in trouble. I think, like I said, you just got to watch. You got to just accept that this, see, this is not a playoff team this year. That has to be your mindset going into the season. And if by some miracle it does happen, enjoy the ride. But going in... It has to be all about we just evaluating players.
players this year. Mm-hmm. So speaking of miracles, let's talk about the Phillies really, really quick. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually uh, checking out Larry Bowman on Twitter, and he's like, "Hey, look at them! Look, look out for the Phillies!" They're mm-hmm. I mean, let's talk honestly. Am I wrong? I think this team's DOA. I think it's the same team every year. I think it's the same team every year, and God bless them. I think like there's a lot of people in that management that want to win. I just don't think, and this is typical of the Phillies, that they know how to win. They uh, they they come across as a poorly ran franchise. I mean, for their whole history, basically. But you thought coming out of the the Ryan Howard Chase Utley era that. They turned the corner, maybe, and you know, mm-hmm. and they haven't. They they are an extremely poorly run team, and the problem is the rest of the division is bad. So you kind of you're always yeah, there. You close your eyes and think, you know, maybe, you know, just maybe yeah. because spit and polish here. You no, know, I don't. I don't can... believe in the Mets and all the injuries with the Braves and the Nationals pitching staff is getting old. So you make all these excuses, but even if they were somehow able to win the division. Which is a long shot to me. They're 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 just so far away. They 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 have a lot of holes. There's a lot of holes, and it, every year it's the bullpen. Yeah. So, um, really quick, best thing about the Phillies, my entire life has been a fanatic. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. He's the star of the franchise. Oh. You know? Phil and Phyllis before him, but you know, a fanatic. Yeah. All right. We're about to close, but I got one final question. This is something he doesn't know. I'm just going to surprise him, get his natural reaction. Here is my million-dollar question based on our first topic. Okay. Is Ben Simmons a bad stereotype of light-skinned cats? <laughs> <laughs> See, I kind of make you laugh. <laughs> He's um, at Wimbledon, you know. He's got the the, the tea and crumpets, the no, strawberries and here's, cream. Here, here's here's what I would say about Ben Simmons: the thing that I think would scare me if I believed in him, which is the fear of failure. Like if he fails, he goes back home to Australia. Let's just say hypothetically, where he had a good life. Yeah, and like it isn't like if he doesn't do well in basketball, he can be like, man, I can't go back to Australia, man. That 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 was hard. No, he, he's always come from, I, I, I want to say, a place of privilege. Yeah, and this has always been my gripe about Ben Simmons mm-hmm. and a lot of the players the Sixers bring in here. You can look at statistics and what's on paper, but if you didn't play in like Rucker Park, or you didn't play in Chicago or like one of these, like in Europe, one of those war-torn countries where cats mm-hmm. are hungry, mm-hmm. like... He's always he's like his dad's like an NBA player. Yeah, yeah. Like he was always like the golden child. He's never he never tasted desperate. Yeah, he no, never had to yeah. fight and claw. So there's no good. fear to go back home. Like, you know, it's like, okay, I had a great life. Like he's, I got if good. I end he's, up in Australia now with two hundred million dollars. Like, yeah, he's almost like a know. pro wrestler where he's got his move set. And, you know, that's what he's going to do. And when you ask him to get out of that, that's where he's lost and confused. No, but to answer your question, I'm going to say no, because, you know, the light skin cats now, they want to prove that. Exactly. You, know, you got Trey Young. You got, that like, they, he's calling out yeah. the Olympics today. You got the Curry <laughs> boys. And then you got Ben Simmons. You know, like, what did Malcolm X and all these light skin pioneers go through that we get the Ben Simmons the, going back into stereotypes? You're like, uh, he's too cool for school. Like, Ben, you got to get hungry, fam. You got to yeah. want it. Hey, maybe maybe after he come back from Wimbledon. <laughs> yeah, when he comes back, when you come back from your strawberries and cream and your supermodel <laughs> girlfriend, maybe you know. And this is from a Philly cat, man. Go to Rucker Park. Go go to go to Philadelphia. Get on the courts. Get hungry. Get hungry. Be a fighter. Maybe you know where Sunny Hill at. Maybe we get Sunny Hill on him. <laughs> He's still alive. <laughs> I just playing. I love you, Sunny. All right. That's going to be it. This is our pilot episode, but keep checking, subscribe. We're going to have more content for you. We got some great stuff on the, coming down the pipe. So Philadelphia perspective, Philadelphia fans, hit us up. We'll see you. This has been an entertaining John. We are out. <laughs> Go to the water ice. <laughs> <laughs>